doch nicht. <lacht> Living it up at 20 past five on a Saturday night with a Diet Pepsi. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Coming at you today with a slightly different video about cooking, more specifically student cooking, more specifically easy, cheap, veggie friendly things that I make quite often. Let me level with you. I can't cook. I am a shit cook, I am rubbish in the kitchen, I don't know what I'm doing, and I find it altogether quite stressful. However, over my two years at university, I have learned some staple dishes that have got me through, and I'm gonna share them with you. Every night for the next week, I'm gonna be cooking a different meal and vlogging it with the instructions that you, if you're going to university or you're already at university, can take some of these ideas, make yourself a little meal plan, and become a chef. Not sure that's how it works. I've just been on a bit of a trek to get all of the stuff and it cost me literally 12 pounds. I know, I know it's insane. I have got some meat in here but it's stuff that can be easily replaced and in fact I have made vegetarian versions of the foods before. I'm not a veggie, I'm not a vegan but I'm trying to be a lot more meat conscious so there you go. I hope this video can be of some help to you because I know student lifestyle is a tricky one, you're trying to do things on the cheap, you can't be bothered a lot of the time, so it is really tempting to just put some frozen things into the oven. Anyone get that reference? Just me? Hello, today- <laughs> Hello, today is day one. I've already done an intro, just so you know, you already know. Um, we're making burritos. When I say we, I mean me, but Emily is gonna eat them with me. Let's hope I don't poison her. We're gonna start off with some nachos, nice and easy. What I mean when I say nachos is crisps with melted cheese and some dips. That's what I mean. Is that all nachos really are? Yeah. It's fine, it's fine. Surprisingly, to make nachos, it's gonna be nice and easy. We're gonna use some tortillas, some of Emily's cheddar cheese, and some of my pre-grated mozzarella cheese. <laughs> then we're gonna bug it in the microwave and it's all gonna be fine. Well, howdy hey everyone, this is voiceover Alice. Okay, so the first thing we're doing is grating up some cheese, then I'm gonna talk over myself talking and let you know that you will need a microwavable dish for this recipe. All I'm doing is just chucking some of the pre-made tortilla chips into the microwavable dish and banging some cheese over them. I'm doing it in some layers, making it a little bit more fancy using two varieties of cheese because you know how we do. Okay, so we've done a lot of hard work so far. We've put um, two pre-made things together and now we're going to put it in the microwave. How long would you put that chip in the microwave for Emily? Um, maybe two minutes. Okay, we'll maybe try. Less. <laughs> Oh, come to mama. I love cheese so much. I'm such a culinary goddess for putting together some melted cheese and some pre-made dips. Oh yeah, baby. Okay, now that we've made some microwavable nachos, we're gonna make the main thing, which is burrito. So you're gonna need an onion, some microwavable rice, or normal rice if you're better than me, some black beans, some garlic paste, because I'm lazy and don't use normal garlic, which you'll see is a theme in this video. Next thing we're gonna do is chop up our onion, like this, very good. I like to cut it long ways and then I cut it horizontally as well and it dices up real nicely. I'm sure you probably knew how to do that, but if you didn't, here's me dicing up an onion, me oh my. Look at me go. Okay, the next thing we're doing is draining all of the liquid out of the black beans can and give it a little shake. Then we're oiling up a little pan so nothing sticks and shoving in those onions and starting to fry it up. Putting in a bit of garlic paste there too. If you're using proper garlic, then do that now. And then we're mixing it all up, giving it a good old stir and frying those bad boy onions up. Oh yeah, look at those fried onions. Then we're adding in those black beans as well and we're gonna give it a big old stir. 
then I'm adding in some chilli powder. Um, I thought I put way too much of this in and panicked, but actually it wasn't really enough, couldn't even really taste it. Then I'm adding in some cumin as well. We love some spices, makes us feel fancy and like we can cook even though we can't. Then we're mixing it all up. Look at me mixing away. And then I'm popping my microwave rice in the microwave, yes. It's not as cheap, but it's super easy and I love microwave rice. Then it's time to dish everything up, so I'm pouring my bean mixture into a bowl and dropping half of it all over the counter. I'm putting my rice into a separate bowl and then I'm putting my wraps in the microwave so that they're nice and toasty. Then I'm serving it all up with some salad, some cheese, some sour cream and chive dip, some salsa, obviously the bean and onion mix and some rice. And there we are looking really happy and there's my wrap before I wrapped it up and here's my little taste test. Mm. Mm. Can confirm it was very yummy. Okay day two carbonara here we go. Why hello everyone and welcome back to my kitchen. Tonight we are making an easy carbonara and when I say easy I mean easy. It's probably not the healthiest thing but it's also not super super unhealthy. There's no cream in it or anything. Let me show you the ingredients. To make the easy carbonara, you are going to need an onion, three egg yolks, some bacon lardons. You don't have to put these in if you're not a veggie, don't worry. It's not in the recipe, but I'm gonna use some mushrooms, some garlic, or in my case, some garlic puree, <laughs> some parmesan, or in my case, some questionable grated Italian style cheese. It was cheaper, okay? <laughs> and finally, some spaghetti, or in my case, because it's all I have. <laughs> As with everything, we're starting off by chopping up an onion, which is something you're going to see a lot in this video. Uh, okay, look at me go. Oh, we love a little time lapse. Look at me go. We love editing. What a great time to be alive. Okay, then I'm getting my mushrooms out and I'm chopping up a couple mushrooms. And then what I'm doing here is cracking the egg to get the yolk out. So if you crack an egg in the middle and then transfer the yolk from one half of the eggshell to the other half eggshell, it will get rid of all of the white, the egg white, that's what I mean. Okay, now that was an artistic shot of me turning on the hob and putting some oil in the pan along with my mushrooms and my onions and frying them up, ooh baby. Then I'm adding some garlic paste as always and giving it a little stir and browning it all off. Then I'm adding in my, what are these? Bacon lardons, that's what I'm adding in. I'm adding my bacon lardons and then I am putting the kettle on to boil. Then I'm whipping up my egg yolk, not whipping, what's the word? Mixing, I can't remember, beating, beating, that's the word. Then I'm putting my hot water into a pan and it's spilling everywhere because our kettle was provided by our uni accommodation and it is rubbish. Then I'm adding in my tagliatelle and trying not to burn my hand while I do it. Giving my other mix a little bit of a stir at the same time and then once my pasta is done, I am draining it all out and pouring it back into the pot. Then I'm adding in my egg yolk and the heat from the pasta will effectively cook the egg yolk. So you need to give it a good old stir, keep stirring it, keep on stirring, just keep stirring, just keep stirring, stirring, stirring. Okay, um, then we're adding in the parmesan and then we'll give that a big stir too. The key here is to keep some pasta water behind or add in a bit more extra water and that'll make it more like a sauce than like a weird crumbly thing on top. So add in a bit of water if it's not looking hot and then you'll get a lovely sauce. Then I'm adding in the oniony mix along with all the bacony bits and giving that a good old mix up as well. And there it is, all done. Look at that, oh baby, get in my belly. Delicious, a bon appetit. And now a little bonus recipe. Good morning, it is the morning time, not the evening and that is because I'm coming at you with some banana pancakes. This is something I do not very often, but I do do it occasionally. And it's just your generic banana pancakes recipe. It's super easy, although I'm always really awful at getting them out of the pan, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, you'll just need one banana, two large eggs, a little bit of baking powder, and that's basically it. I've got two bananas, because I might have one on top, and I also put in some dark chocolate chips with a little bit of sweetness that isn't like the most unhealthy because dark chocolate is a bit more healthy than milk chocolate that's what i'm telling myself with my brain to make me not feel bad about it but yeah let's go okay first thing i'm doing is i'm peeling my banana obviously putting it into a bowl and then i'm going to take a fork and mash it up until it's basically like a thick mushy paste sounds yummy i know <laughs> this recipe basically tastes like banana and chocolate crepes to me um 
but also it's an acquired taste and I love it. Anyway, um, I'm breaking two eggs into my little pot and then giving them a little whisk. Then I'm adding in the banana mix. Yep, really looks grim. Then I'm mixing it all up again. Then I'm gonna add in some baking powder and also a little, little bit of vanilla extract. And then I'm giving it one heck of a big mix up. Then I'm putting a lot of oil onto a pan and pouring in that mixture. I'm sprinkling some chocolate chips over the top for some sweetness. And then I'm basically gonna keep going underneath the pancake to make sure it doesn't stick and moving it about because as you can see from that shot, it all went tits up basically and um, it didn't flip properly. And that's something that happens a lot, but here I am tasting it and oh yes, it's very good. Day three risotto, here we go. Hello dear viewer and welcome back. You've made it this far. Tonight we are making another Italian dish. We're making a risotto. Uh, the carbonara went down well last night, so I'm hoping this one also does. Um, if you're wondering to yourself, where, where is this camera currently right now? I'll tell you, you're in the fridge. Um, but this lighting though, hello to you. Um, you might also be asking yourself, Alice, are you in your pajamas? The answer is yes, yes I am. And you might also be wondering, why isn't I saw it first, top, your pajamas? Well, fun story, I've never actually shopped at I saw it first, never have I ordered anything from them. I just got it for free at a freshers fair in my first year, and so in my pajama drawer it has lived and now here it is. For the whole internet to see. So you're welcome, I saw it first. You're welcome. Oh no, that's the fridge. Enough chatting. Let's get on with making a risotto. In no particular order, you are going to need an onion, some mushrooms, some risotto rice, some stock, you can use veggie version, or you can use the meat version, garlic paste, or actual garlic, you know, if you're better than me, you do you, hun. The other half of the bacon lardons. You can use non-meat varieties, or just not put it in at all. Before I have done this without the lardons and with the vegetable stock and made it veggie, so it's up to you. Some cheese, it doesn't have to be grated mozzarella, whatever you fancy. A little bit of milk and a little bit of butter, or in my case, butter that is not in fact butter. Let's get cooking. Kill surprise, I'm starting off by chopping an onion. Wow, I'm sure you could have never seen that one coming. Then we're going in with some mushrooms as well. Oiling up a wok because stuff on a wok sticks like no tomorrow, particularly risotto. Then I'm adding in my bacon lardons into the wok. And I'm just going to cook them up first, make sure that they're thoroughly cooked because it is meat. Then I'm going to add in my mushrooms and my onions. I'm boiling the kettle as well. And I'm getting my jar. And into it, I'm going to crumble the stock cubes. So obviously I'm pouring the boiling water over the stock and then I'm gonna give it a mix up as well. Then I'm adding some garlic into my main mix and then I'm pouring in a heck ton of risotto rice. Straight after I put that in, I'm pouring over my stock mixture and basically all the risotto rice is gonna absorb all the stock. Um, and now you're just gonna repeat those steps over and over again, waiting for the rice to absorb the stock, then putting more stock in. I'm making enough risotto to feed a family of 10. <sighs> then once it is officially all finished up, I don't know what makes it official, I don't know. Um, I'm adding in a splash of milk and a few small knobs of butter as well because I love me some dairy. Then to top it all off, I'm putting in some cheese too, oh baby, and mix it all up. I've given myself the world's fattest portion and there's garlic bread, oh my. Do I like it, do I like it? Oh yes I do, yes I do. Day four fajitas. Hello, hello, it's another day, another dawn, another easy student meal. Today we are making some fajitas and I hesitate to even use the word making because it is just so ludicrously easy. Anyone can do it, especially the way I'm doing it. Um, so I'm making chicken fajitas, however, you could 
definitely do this as a veggie alternative. I have before, literally in one of my vlogs from the other week, I made it with halloumi instead of chicken. So that's an alternative. Or of course you could do it with corn meat instead. Now I'm literally making my life even easier by using pre-cooked chicken. Sounds weird. But basically, I'll, I'll show you. I'm really bad at buying chicken and then putting it in the freezer and forgetting to defrost it and then it just looking gross and horrible when it's frozen and me not wanting to use it. So I have recently started using this and it's super, super cheap and really easy. It's pre-sliced chicken breast that is frozen and pre-cooked and ready to eat. So I effectively just take some out the night before, shove it on a plate in a little plastic bag in the fridge and it defrosts overnight. And now I've got loads of chicken pre-sliced ready to use. So that is already cooking out. So that is already taking out one of the more difficult steps. The only other thing I need to do is slice up a pepper. Slice up an onion, of course, because apparently I can't make a single recipe without using an onion. <laughs> I've got me some wraps. We've got some leftover salsa and sour cream from our burritos from the first night. And then I'm just using half a packet of Old El Paso seasoning mixed with fajitas. This is the mild version. It's smoky barbecue. I feel like me and Emily can both handle a bit of spice, but like not too much. <laughs> so this is perfect. It's really not too spicy. So yeah, I'm just going to bung this all into a pan, fry it up, and then I will heat up some of the wraps in the microwave for a couple of seconds and it'll be fine. I've only got four wraps and I'm really hungry. So I'm also gonna put some garlic bread in. <laughs> Doesn't really go with the vibes, but you know what? I've got a leftover garlic bread baguette from the other day. So might as well use it up. Free run again in my mind, a magical night. I forgot that you existed and I thought that it would kill me, but it didn't. What is cooking if you don't have a dance party in your kitchen while you're putting your garlic bread in? Okay, it's getting a bit embarrassing now, please stop. Okay, um, first thing we're gonna do is chop up our pepper. Whoa, not our onion, I know, mixing it up, but don't get too worried because it's exactly the next thing I'm gonna do. Look, there we go. Cool, okay, oh, that wasn't very good, Alice. Right, then I'm popping in my chicken into the pan and browning that off a little bit, making sure it's all good to go. Oh, artistic shots, we love that for me. Then I'm adding in my pepper and my onion and cooking it all up, or should I say stir frying it all. Then I'm literally just adding the packet mix over the top, mixing it round a lot, making sure it's all coated and cooked thoroughly. Then I'm popping my wraps into the microwave for a couple seconds as per the packet instructions. And putting my fajita mix into a little bowl so that we can make our own fajitas on our table. Okay, I'm all served up. We've got some warm wraps here. The chicken mix with the onions and the peppers and the mix on top of it. <laughs> some garlic bread because why not? Sour cream and chive, salsa, mayo because I love mayo on everything, even fajitas. Some cheese because I love cheese on everything, even fajitas. And then some salad and spinach because I think my salad might have gone slightly off, but you know what? Never mind. <laughs> Day five halloumi curry. Oh god, here we go. Mamma mia. Um, <laughs> great. Um, hello everyone, welcome back. The last night, I can't remember what number night it is, but we out here. Yeah. Um, today we're making halloumi curry, a recipe uh, that was taught to me by my good friend Sydney, who's currently residing on my sofa, but I don't think she wants to be on camera right now. Um, <laughs> super easy and makes me feel like I can actually cook even though I can't so I'm gonna stop doing this <laughs> yeah well because you like it lying down on the sofa like I mean I can put you on camera <laughs> so for this you're gonna need an onion, as always, because I can't cook anything without an onion, a pepper, a can of chopped tomatoes, halloumi, of course, some spinach, that's not the right way around, some spinach, and a little bit of tikka masala paste. And that's it. That's all you need. What's the first step? You guessed it. Chopping up an onion. Oh, yes. Then I'm going to chop up my pepper too. There's probably better ways to chop up stuff, but this is just the way I do it every time. And I'm putting them in the pan with some garlic paste, and then I am pouring over my can of tin tomatoes. 
give it a good mix up, cook it for a little bit as well, let it simmer on a low heat, then eventually you need to add your curry paste. So here I am just adding that in. I did two teaspoons. I know my friend Sydney does two tablespoons. Um, this was spicy enough for me. So, you know, take from that what you will. I am a wuss. Then I'm adding in a heck ton of spinach. Don't be afraid to add loads. It will condense so much. You won't believe how much it will condense down and it makes it look really healthy because there's actually green things in it. Whoa, it's a scam. Oh, look at that bubbling away. Get in my belly, please. Then I have chopped up my halloumi. Well, cut up, chopped, sliced, sliced. Then I'm just popping it onto my pan. You need to keep it moving a lot and then use a little fork to turn them all over so that they both get equal cooking. Then I have used some more microwave rice, love my life. And then I'm adding the halloumi into the mix at the very end, once it's all done. You don't want it in there for too long because you don't want the cheese to melt or anything. Um, but yeah, that's effectively it. How easy was that? And it looks so good and it's so yummy. So just dish it all up and there you go. Hi everyone, slight location change. Um, I'm now not in Sheffield, I'm in my family home. I've come home for a week before term starts and all the craziness begins. Although I'm not sure how crazy it will be with lectures happening over the internet, regardless. Hi, um, I've just been editing this video and realised I forgot to end it, which is becoming a theme on this channel, which is not very good. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you got some ideas for some student friendly meals you can make. I honestly had a great week of eating it all and I actually started to quite enjoy cooking. What? I know. So yeah, I hope from one of those five or six recipes or however many there was, there was something that took your fancy. Um, let me know if you try any of them out. Uh, at me on insta or something i don't know thanks for tuning in thanks for watching this far like the video if you liked it if you like you can subscribe you could comment or you could follow me on instagram or even share the video that's something you could do or hit the notification bell i'm a really bad youtuber okay thanks very much and i'll see you all next time Bye bye